This video is uh, the continuation of the process of the to-do app, the no-code app Giver and Xano to-do app. As you can see, I'm going to start off here, look down at my phone. I'm going to start up the app Giver emulator and just kind of refresh where we were last time. Um, if you participated in the initial one, you'll see that we have the three to-dos that come out of the back end, which is Xano, and are displayed in the app Giver mobile app that we're building. So what we're going to do this time is extend this mobile app and up right below the empty page title, we're going to put in an input field that allows us to filter the list of to-dos. So if I can remember what I'm doing, this should go pretty quickly. Here we are with AppGyver. I'm going to go back into the to-do list application. It brings us back into the one view that we have. I'm also going to go into Xano and pick the to-do app that we built and put us into the APIs. And these uh, are the group of APIs we were working with. So the first thing I need to do is enhance my to-do API. This is the API that's getting called by the AppGyver mobile app to retrieve the list of to-dos. And maybe just as a quick refresher on that, give me a sec. We'll go into the database and remind everyone that here is the database with the three entries that we see in the mobile app. So our goal will be to um, filter these. So if you don't wanna see everything, you can allow the user of the mobile app to type in some data and filter based on name, I think is where we're gonna start that process. No, nope, pardon me. I went into the post, and what I really want to do is go into the get query all to do records. Okay, so to start off with, as I said, I typically do things from data up to the user interface. So we once again are starting with the data. I'm going to come into the API, and what I'm looking to do is add a text field that will be passed in to the user of the API, which in this case is the mobile app. And I've created a field called filter. And the goal here is that will allow the user to pass in any text and filter on the database based on that. Now for that to work, I need to connect that input field into my function stack. And to do that, I am going to create a variable. And the reason for creating this variable is to um, put a percent sign on the front and the back side of whatever text is being passed in. And this allows the query engine that sits within Xano to find any text that is contained within the name. And I'll give you uh, examples as opposed to using words to describe that. So the first thing I'm going to do is type in text like I said, of a percent. And then I'm going to add a filter. And a filter is let, what in Xano allows me to act on the data. And what I'm going to do is concatenate. So there's functions. There's many functions. Once again, I'll try to avoid going through all those. You can go to the Xano tutorials and find those details. But I want to use concatenate. And I want to concatenate that percent sign to the input that is filter, which is the input I just created. And then I want to add one more filter onto that because I need to be able to concatenate a percent sign onto the back side of that. So here's what I've got. I'm creating a variable called query filter, and that variable will contain percent, the, the dynamic input from the mobile app in filter, and then another percent. And I'm going to show you why that becomes important as we go to, uh, okay. So whenever, one quick note here, whenever you create a function on the function stack, it'll place it on the bottom. In this case, this is something that I want to have on the top. So I just grab the little move icon and I pull it up to the top. So you can move your function stack in any order you need. Now, the reason I built this is because I wanted to do a query that filtered on the items in the to-do list. So I'm now in the query all records of the to-do table um, on the filter section, and I'm gonna create a custom query 
that is uh, using the where clause. So if you're not familiar with SQL or SQL, um, you'll want to spend a little bit of time learning some of the basics. A where clause is an action that can be taken with a query to limit the records coming back. So what I'm going to do is pick a variable. So that's the query filter with the percent filter percent that I just created. Oh, sorry. Actually, I'm losing track of things as I talk. What I want to do is pick the database name. So out of to do, I'm picking the name field, which is text. And I want to find any of the records where the name field, in a case insensitive way, is like the variable query filter. So this means if I were to type in OG in my mobile app, the percent filter percent variable here would find dog. That's what the like does. It's kind of generalizing the search. Once again, you can look up like for SQL and they'll give you a much better description than what I just did. But that is now gonna allow me a filter and I need to save. And let me just kind of prove that point. We're going to come into the run and debug like we've done in the um, first videos. And I'm going to type in OG, like I said, for an example, and I'm going to run. And if you notice, wash the dog shows up. Um, if we also go back and what else did I have? Did I have vacuum in this one? Let's see. I don't even remember now what I've had in there. Yes, I did. Vacuum the living room. So if you notice, I'm only getting the things back that match the filter on the name. Now you might be saying, hey, what about the description? I might want to search on that. Uh, in a later video, I can show you how to do that. Um, just as a little hint or a cheat moment here, if you're interested in trying it on your own ahead of that, what you can do is whenever you create the initial to-do, you can concatenate, like we learned here, the name field and the description field and put that in a new column that you would create in the table called search. Um, and, and that will allow you to do a search instead of on name, you can do it on the search column and it will contain the text for both the name and the description. Um, I will get that in at a later point. Once again, trying to maintain my videos around 10 to 15 minutes at the moment. Okay, so what we have now is the API and we've tested the API and it works. So once again, building from data back up to mobile app, I'm gonna come back in to AppGyver where I'm in my to-do app. I'm gonna to go to the main navigation and pick data. And I'm gonna go in my, into my to-do item. I don't change my base, but I am gonna change my get collection uh, so that we can put the filter in. And for that filter to work, I need to add a query parameter and I'm gonna give it a label. The label is what's gonna be used throughout AppGyver to understand what this is. And then the key, now let me, the key needs to match what I put in Xana, which is filter, it's text. It is not static. It is something that changes dynamically based on user input, so I turn that off. And it is optional, you don't have to use it. So I'm gonna leave is optional on. Okay, so now, we go back to the get collection. Now we're gonna test what we just created. If you notice, now we have a filter here. So I'm gonna say, let's go with static text, and we'll do the same thing we did in Xano to make sure this works. Typed in OG, run test, and I just get the one item back. Now I do not need to set the schema again, because the data I'm returning is no different. It's just that I'm filtering that data. Okay, so at this point, I now have my data figured out. So now I'm coming back to my main screen. And what I need is, you know what, let's just go with the simple primitive input field. You could use a search field as well, and I will probably do some enhancements later on the videos to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing and actually use a search field. Uh, I've got an example of that that I've done over time that's got, uh, I guess, more interesting, I'll say, uh, more interesting layout and the ability to clear the field. So I dropped it at the bottom because it's easiest. I was missing when I tried to drop it at the top. I'm going to come over to page layout and now move it up to the top. So 
So I am now gonna name that input field. You have to come down to advanced properties and under the advanced properties while I've clicked on that input field, I have the ability to name it. And I am just gonna call it filter just so that I can more easily find it based on everything else I've named. Okay, so we've got the filter identified. I now wanna spend a little bit of time fixing up my data variable. If you notice, it sees, since it's attached to the data resource, it sees that it needs a filter or can have a filter. So what I need to do is connect, oh, you know what I forgot? Always forgetting one thing at least. I need a page variable to associate with my input field. So we're gonna call this filter text. Okay, so I've created a variable on the page and what I need to do is associate this variable on the page with the actual input field on the page. Okay, page variable, there it is. Much happier now. Okay, so now what happens is every time I type something into this input field, it's gonna go into that page variable. And anytime I change that page variable, it'll be reflected in the input field. That's called two-way binding. Um, it's an interesting term, it may become relevant to you, but that's what that is, is two-way binding. So now I can go back to my variable, and now I'm gonna go back to the data variable, pick to do, and now I can actually do the filter connection that I wanted to do. There we go, filter text. So this now means that anything that I type into the um, input field will be put into the page variable, and that page variable is being used to call the data resource through the data variable, and it'll pass filter in. I usually forget one or two items as I go through this. So what we're gonna do is, I think we're probably about ready to test. No, we're not. Uh, I just remembered what I'm forgetting. What I need to do is every time the component changes, so anytime the input field has text typed into it or deleted from it, this trigger down here in the um, function or the flows will be fired. And what I want to do, let me go look in the bottom left here. Let me move myself out of the way. What I need to do, I'm gonna need a set data variable. But before I set a data variable, I am going to need the get record collection. So I change stuff in the input field. This trigger fires, when this trigger fires, I wanna call the get record collection. It already picked to do's because that's the only item I have, like this. Once you have more data items, you'll have to go in and actually pick them like I just did there. And then once again, I need to attach the filter. It is the data variable, page variable, filter text. Okay, so now I have the changing of the input field firing off the request. And then I am setting a data variable, which is the to-do data variable based on <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So I'm jumping around here a lot. Let me just slow down for a sec. I now, um, after I get the data from the record collection call, I need to put that data in my to-do list data variable on that page which I'm doing here, and I need to assign it from the output value of another node. That other node was the get record collection ahead of this, and I need to get the record collection that I received from that, which is a collection of all records. So at this point, I'll have all the to-dos put into the to-do data variable, and that'll be based on the filter. So hopefully that all ties together for you. You're always welcome to rewatch the video if I'm going through it too quickly. Now the one thing that I like to do that I'm gonna go ahead and throw in here now, just because it'll make life friendlier, is I'm gonna go into the flow functions here at the bottom left. And I'm gonna do a search 
for a function that is available but not installed by default, and it's called dbounce. And what dbounce does for you, after I've installed it here, I'm gonna drag it out onto the palette. Dbounce allows you to only call the get collections every few seconds. So instead of every time I type a character firing off that API, now what I'm doing is every, let's say two tenths of a second, every 200 milliseconds, it will call. So if I type two or three characters very quickly, it'll only call the API once and it makes for a much smoother user interface. Okay, I think I have most of what I need now. So what we're gonna do is take the chance that I'm right and we're gonna come back to the phone and let's see what happens when I type in VA. There we go, it's always fun, isn't it? So simple in the long run, but uh, so much fun. Uh, if we type in WAS, and if you notice, we've got a W and two of those, so that shows up, and then I get them all back. Okay, so that is the video for today. Uh, I think the next time what we're gonna do, if I keep to my schedule, is whenever we click on one of these list items, I wanna take us to a new screen that shows the detail of that item. And some of the options we have for that detail will be obviously the name and description, but we can also show the create date. And maybe we'll even add in some information about whether it's completed or not. Once again, if you have any questions, please let me know and look forward to talking to you in the next video.